you're sitting on the bus minding your own business when suddenly the driver lets out a ear splitting yee-haw you feel the weightlessness as you're airborne roll for saves this is episode seven and um oh things are changed so the zoom is not working um as i mentioned in the previous episode i trying a new software uh games game caster i believe it's called um and i figured out how i can also get the audio extracted from it fairly easily without audacity and so i'm able to keep the podcast running as well um so hopefully this setup will last for a while uh so episode seven um today we're going to continue our story and if you're watching on YouTube, you can see that my screen setup has changed a little bit. Uh, I was using a Google drawing uh, to track the... No, I don't want to talk to Google. All right. I was using a, a drawing to track my plot map and everything. But I can kind of do the same thing in Owlbear Rodeo. Um, it's a little bit more difficult to get the lines. Uh, so I'm not really going to be drawing lines, I don't think and I, really difficult to do text but it's easier to move things around and it's one less window to have open at a time um yeah i might have a meta episode about uh, what i'm using for my windows so um we're gonna jump into episode seven um in the previous story episode which was episode five chafing uh uh encountered their first uh combat right they they were at work and they were uh minding their own own business basically is what they're supposed to do and let the other uh blade archivists um move around the freight and everything to get uh things set up for them to become into control of the artifacts uh basically they were uh, moving things into different boxes to set it up to have the artifacts delivered to themselves instead of uh, instead of being shipped out to the old old world islands. And another faction came in, the low nobles, um, and they tried to uh, heist the heist. Basically, they they just wanted to come in and just straight up take the artifacts. They had information of where the artifacts were going to be um where, which docks are going to be on and everything and they were just going to go and straight up steal them and use them to try to gain power within the colonies um power to increase their station in the in the world but jfing and the blade archivist stopped them so uh everything went according to plan except for the the low nobles uh Jafing completed their mission, so to speak, and go has an uneventful morning. Um, wakes up the next evening, uh, just before going to work again. Uh, goes to work, has another uneventful night at work, and after that, oh, um, I'm not going to do it, but there there would be a scene where they go to their sister and get the um the parrot and. Uh, bring it to their new apartment so that would have happened um Jafing would of course spend some time trying to you know teach the parrot bond to the parrot getting it to feed out of its uh out of his hand and everything and there's going to be a scene where Jafing um is getting breakfast at their bed and breakfast and uh I need to have a payday soon. Uh, I need to figure out how much pay Jafing makes in a day. But Jafing goes down for breakfast and uh, what's his name? Nala. Nala is there and says, Jafing, oh, good morning to you. And Jafing's like, good evening, Officer Nala. How are you today? And they're, they, you know, get through, through their pleasant pleasantries. And Nala says, um, you have the day off of work today um just so you know 
And JV's like, what? No, I was scheduled to work every day for the rest of my life. Um, basically, he's trying to get up all the uh, all the shifts that he can to try to save up some money. And Nala's like, no, 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 you, you have today off. Um, you have a very important meeting to go to. And we'll be heading out after um, your breakfast. So they have the breakfast and everything. And after the breakfast, they head out into uh, the wilderness because they meet in the wilderness. And basically, J Fing's being inducted into this faction, um, into this cult. And They take J Fing in the wilderness. Um, I'm gonna say that there is what would have been like a small two or three room complex. Um, maybe it was a house, maybe it was a bunker, no telling what it was, but it's from the precursors and it's in a sort of swampy area is very hard to get to um they, they basically it's a lot of weeds and stuff in the water you can't so you have to kind of uh take like a a little barge out you kind of push yourself around with the with the pole and very very difficult to get to um and there's like a little island and there's a door at the top of the island uh which looks like which has like a tree stump on top of the door. But someone's figured out that there is a door, the tree, like they cut off the tree so they can get the door open and everything, left the tree stump on. And you go down and there's just three small rooms, small as in like, like classroom size, I guess, um, which would be what, 30 by 30, 40 by 40, something like that. Um, and down, down here, they're having a meeting of the Blade Archivists. And the Blade Archivists, I don't think there's going to be many. Um, maybe 10. Um, there were seven at the highest. Nala was not there. So that's at least eight. Maybe another D6 on top of that. So let's say uh, eight plus D6. Um, eight plus two D6. Eight plus, let's do eight plus two D4. Uh, that is a total of three. So there's 11 total. Um, and of course, they. Oh, Ned is also there, Ned. So 11, 12. Um, is Ned's wife, is Ned's wife a member? I think likely, yes, 12. Yeah, she's a member. Wow, those dice are so big now. I got that window big. Um, all right, so... Yeah, there's like 12 or 13 members. We'll, we'll say 13 members. Um, so everyone that we've met already, everyone we've seen already on screen, the named characters, uh, Ned and his wife, Nala, and the other seven people that were unloading the equipment. And so not that many. And for a room that's like the size of a, a classroom, then they can easily fit. They So they bring Jafing down. And Jafing is kind of surprised to see them. They have, they've really cleaned up these rooms. Um, and they're very quiet. Uh, there's no natural light down here um, under the ground and water because it's actually going to be running under the, the flooded swamp area. So because there's no natural lighting, they have some candles. Um, some people were taking the time to like set up some decorations or something, you know, hanging some some cloth on the walls, something to make it seem less utilitarian. And the walls, we're gonna say they're they're metal, um, but it's not iron. It's not a known metal. It's kind of a an ashy gray color, and it's it's it, it's like a matte feel to it when you run your fingers across it um it's not slick but it's kind of a, a matte feel and 
maybe there's even some condensation because they are submerged under the water and everything. Um, and they also have the artifacts that they stole. Uh, so they, they, it was delivered the day before and they got them over here. Um, so they bring Jafing down and Nala being the person that Jafing knows, uh, starts talking to Jafing and says, Jafing, these are the other members, our other friends. Um, we want to bring you down here so you know what we're doing. We greatly appreciate your help and we hope you, we can look forward to keep working with you. Um, these are, these artifacts are items of great power and we want to keep them from getting into the wrong hands. We, we're trying to save human life and we're trying to save our home. The, the masters back in the old world, the way that they treat us, it just isn't right. You know, they, we, we're working, we're, we're exploring, we're facing these dangers and they just tax and tax and tax and tax, tax us and try to take everything. So we are trying to um, help build a better world for ourselves. And these artifacts are amazing. The, what they can accomplish, um, the powers they hold, uh, they, they have more uses than just uh, weapons as the uh, masters back in the old world would have us believe. So what we try to do is try to explore these items, figure out how to use them and how we can uh, harness their power for the benefit of all instead of the benefit of you. And Jafing, Jafing is um, caught off guard. Um, everyone's kind of standing in a semicircle, um, kind of nodding solemnly, and he kind of he kind of gets the religious vibe, like that they they kind of revere at least the artifacts. Um, they haven't really mentioned the the lost people yet the lost tribe, the lost group. Um, so he doesn't know what to think of them. Um, so he doesn't realize that they kind of worship those people, uh, the predecessors in the land. So how does Jafing react? Um, is, is Jafing absolutely surprised? Uh, that's the worst result. So yeah, he, he's really, he's really taken aback. He's really surprised by all this. Um, he didn't realize how religious they're going, they, they were. Um, so I think that he's going to be a little hesitant, um, in his reaction. So is he going to, is he going to join this fraternity? Or is he so turned off by the trappings of a religion that they're bringing? Because e either Jafing doesn't believe in religion or is bordering on heresy um, for the religion Jafing does believe in. So I think it's going to be a D4 because he was surprised and then a couple D6s. All right, so uh, that's bad for so Jafing um, is not convinced that he wants to join this group. Um, so Jafing says, "Look, I, I appreciate everything you've done um, for me, but what's going on here? Like, is this some kind of like a strange church or something? Like, what what?" What what are you what are you asking of me? And you say, um, we're, it's not going to be Nala. Um, it's going to be a new character. He's not going to introduce himself, so I'm not going to get a name yet. I need to make a list of names I can just pull from easily. Um, he's not going to introduce himself. He's 
but he's going to come up and this is kind of the the high priest he's kind of the founder of this movement and he listen jafing um i appreciate your hesitancy i i, I totally understand um i'm the founder of the group I, I i'm the one that started all of this so i think it might be easier if i explain what's happening the there were people here in the land of lore before we even got here um when they were here we don't know it could have been last year it could have been a thousand years ago um we believe it was a long time ago because of the way nature has overgrown some of their ruins but the fact is that they were here um they were also a very advanced race um their artifacts only hint at the the feats of technology that they, of technology that they must have reached just think about what the noblins have done with the the airships right and multiply that times a thousand so regardless of whether you know we we we're not a religion so much right he's kind of trying to water it down right he's trying to water it down we're not a religion so much um yes we we do have a reverence for these people but we don't pray to them we don't believe that they can help us now um but we do hold them in reverence and we do believe that uh their technology can act as a sort of savior for us um that their technology can provide safety and security and sustainability for our people we don't know what happened to the old people um but we believe that uh we believe that by studying their civilization by study, studying their technology and um their old places such as this that we can provide a better future for our people as well so what we're asking you to join is a group of people that want to improve our lot here in lore and in autumn we want to strike off the yoke of the old masters and we want to how do they say it we want to provide we want to forge a grand future for ourselves and for our descendants and i can absolutely understand if this appears to be blasphemous or uh blasphemous or too much for you to uh what's the word i'm looking for i can't think of the word i'm looking for if we can understand if this kind of hits wrong for you and if you want out you'll give that chance you'd be giving up some great friends though um that's kind of a threat that he's giving jafing like you'll be giving up your friends you'll be losing this nice apartment you just got you have this bird but you won't have anywhere to go right um you you can get out if you wish but you know we 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 could use a person in your position um it'd be a great help to us and as i'm sure uh ned and nala have suggested you will be compensated for your work for your contribution um we we believe in helping each other we believe in helping our fellow citizens and we are trying to make a better world for everybody all right um i think that plea for compassion and humanity does hit well for jafing for what i planned for his background so i think he's more than likely going to go with that argument um so i think he's going to have a d 12 mixed in with the d6s does he accept now oh yes all right 
Um, so this hits Jfing well. Um, so Jfing's like, I, I appreciate this. I, I really do. Um, I don't know how much you know about my own family. I, I know you've probably have done some research into me or something, but I, I largely I'm unaccepted by my own kin. So I, I really, I really appreciate this opportunity to join a new family, so to speak. And yes, I would like to forge a better future for our citizenship. But I would like to know your views on the counterculture. The, the people that are, are generally shunned by the church, and I need to rename the church into something. The people re that are shunned by the church, that are, that are shut out by the government, like, do you plan to help them as well? And I believe that this group is. I believe that, um, like many revolutionaries, you take what you can get. Um, so, uh, what, uh, what Jafing is hinting at here is people that, you know, the, the people that can't contribute directly to society, they lose their rights to society. Um, right. So they, they, they don't have the money. They don't have, you know, they might have a disability or something, um, or they might be considered like untouchables by the church. Um, unclean maybe due to their job or their addictions or uh, even the personality right um, you know if they are a homosexual or something right so they might be just shunned by their church and Jfing that has a bad taste in Jfing's mouth and that's why the trappings and this the church trappings and everything the religious trappings down here, it's kind of a turnoff for him. Um, so I think it's likely that a revolutionary cult, because it is sort of a cult as well, um, I believe that they are going to, at least in this initial phase, be accepting of whoever they can get for help, whether it is a person that the society traditionally casts aside. So I think it's going to be likely a D12 that he'll answer. Yes, we'll help everyone. We'll accept everyone. Um, so I'm going to add D12 to this and everything else can be a D6. One, two, three. Well, okay. So yes, yes, we accept everyone. Um, uh, no, we have not really checked into your past. We, we accept whoever comes to us, um, whoever we feel, uh, not just can help us, but whoever we feel would be willing to work with us. And your contribution the other night led us to believe that you are willing to work with us. So Jfing accepts. Um, we're going to be drawing this scene to a close. Jfing accepts. And they, they have a little um, induction ceremony and give him his golden pin um i think i mentioned that he had a golden pin before but they they were willing to take it from him but yeah it's it's definitely his now um he is a full member and they will spend the evening trying to figure out what the um what the devices do um that they that they heisted how many devices did they get um, not many. I think it's going to be 2d4. Yeah, I'll say, I'll say 2d4. I don't think I'll get an eight. Nope, I got a three. So they got three total artifacts. All, all that fight with the low nobles and everything is only over three artifacts, which is several hundred credits, coins, whatever the, the, the currency is. So it's several hundred coins worth of, uh, material of items that they got. So they got three artifacts. Um, I'm 
going to put a new sticky for this. Um, so if you're listening to the podcast, I'm going to make a sticky uh, for what they got, three artifacts. And then I'm going to roll for J-Thing. The, the, they're they're going to spend, some of them be there all night. Other ones, you know, they got work in the morning, whatever. They'll come in there off time um, to figure it out. They'll, they'll eventually, they probably would have had J-Thing like hooded and everything as they were on the water. Um, so he wouldn't be able to locate it, but they will eventually teach him how to get there on his own. Um, but there are three artifacts and Jafing's going to have a chance to figure out how to use one. Um, and for this, I'm going to say Jafing. Jafing's going to roll a D8. Nautical's not going to help. Um, a tune and study each could help, but you only add one skill to the roll. So even though either of the skills, because he, because Artifacts are basically the quote unquote magical weapons. Um, so a tune can be used to um, figure them out, but he's also studying. So I, I would possibly allow another player to use study to figure out what an artifact does. Um, so I'm going to let Jafing go up to a D8. Um, I don't see anything that would make it hard. He has help from people that have done this before so i'm gonna leave it at d8 all right so i'm gonna roll a d8 to see if jafing figures out an artifact no he doesn't um and he's gonna have a consequence oh okay he's he's trying to um figure out this artifact it has like he he hits a switch by accident and it folds over whatever it is um this big metallic tube looking thing it has what might be a handle um there's some weird flanges sticking out of it here and there and he hits a switch and it collapses into half um and it's, it's like it's on a spring or something just really just quickly just collapses into half and his finger smashed in it and I'm actually going to give him his first injury I'm going to say this is going to be a slight injury um well let's do it correctly um let's roll a d4 oh that's a four that's actually going to be a minor injury all right um yeah he his uh oh he has he has a broken finger all right, so he has a broken finger. I'm going to make these cells a little bit longer. There we go. That's a little bit too long. Make it a little bit shorter. There. All right, so he has a broken finger. It's going to take a bit for that to heal. Um. Yeah, it, it hurt. It really hurt. And he's going to... Oh, I just realized I need to change that rule a little bit. All right. Um... Yeah, that's the end of his night. I'm going to end the scene there. Uh, he has a broken finger uh, from the artifact. Injuries. Let's talk about injuries a little bit um, before we end up end off this uh, this session. So the way injuries work, um, there you can have up to a total of ten injuries. Um, four slight injuries, three minor, two major one deadly and then if you would get another deadly injury after that you actually die if you would get one that would be that level um to when you take an injury you roll a die and depending on how many previous injuries you have you roll a higher die um so i'll roll a d4 for jafing because he had no injuries i got a four so that gives him a minor injury and um, he will eventually go for healing. Um, and when you, you have to get 10 progress of healing, once 10 progress is uh, hit, 
all of your injuries drop down one level. So a minor healing, a minor injury would become a slight injury. So his, his finger is no longer broken, but it is still healing. It's kind of stiff. It's not quite fully functioning yet. Um, and then next time that tin is filled up, then the finger is fully healed. Um, so when you fill up the healing track, the highest injury you have based on the highest injury you had before the healing track was filled you get to roll a die to determine a new grit grit score um and i think i had it where whatever you rolled will replace your current grit so if you roll less then your grit actually drops down but i think i'm going to change that to where it is because i just realized wait if i if i take this broken finger and i heal it um down to a slight injury then i can roll a die and get more grit for chafing um but then if i heal it again that same injury is only going to be a slight injury and he's going to roll a smaller die to determine their new grit so i wanted to I just realized, oh, I need to make it where you keep the new score no matter what it is. Not you keep the new score only if it is better than your previous score. Yeah. So I just realized that while I was typing in the injury. Um, so I'm gonna go into my document here and I'm gonna change that. Where is healing? That's magic. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Magic combat. Effort, consequences, play the game. Where is healing? Healing. Okay. Uh, uh, Reroll your grit. Uh, Reroll your grit. Re uh, Roll the die. Reroll your grit. Keeping the new result if it is uh, higher than your previous score. There we go. All right. So if you heal a slight injury, you can reroll your grit with a d6. If it's a minor injury, you reroll with a d8. Major, reroll with a d10. And de deadly, reroll with a d12. Um, and down here at the bottom, I have keep the new result, even if it lower than the other one and I'm gonna take that out and that is gone okay all right that is done yep I think that's it for today Jafing has a broken finger I gotta start filling up that grit track um receive healing efforts added when the track is full all right I think you're gonna heal one you receive one healing uh, per day magic or medicine or something can increase that but yeah you you, you get a, one per day unless you have healing or uh, medicine or something applied to you all right i'm gonna keep him there um that's gonna be it for the day so we're ending today with a broken finger on a failed roll all right um well, that's it for today. Uh, again, uh, I should be able to move forward with the podcast. And uh, if you're listening to the podcast, you can watch the videos on youtube.com. Uh, to support me, then you can find Roll for Saves on patreon.com. And questions and comments can be sent to rollforsaves at gmail.com. Uh, all right. Well, we'll have another session next time. Play games and have fun. Bye.